Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser, and I know one thing that you and I have in common, and that is we both get tons of email messages. Now, it can be overwhelming at times, but if you know how to use Outlook sorting and filtering features, it doesn't have to be nightmarish. Some of the features work only in the Windows version, but most of what you need to do will work in both Windows and Mac, and wherever possible, I'll show you both. The key is really in creating subfolders and then different techniques of moving messages into subfolders. So let's start out with creating them. So whether you're using Windows or Mac, and I'm using the 2013 version here of Outlook, simply right-click the inbox and from the pop-up menu, choose New Folder. And you could call it just about anything you want. I'll simply call this Important Stuff. And after I finish typing in the words, I'll just press the Enter key. And now I have a subfolder. I click the subfolder, of course, it's empty. There's nothing in there yet. So let's go and put some important stuff in that folder. If I want just one message, I can simply select it. If I want multiple messages, I can hold down the control key or the command key on the Mac and then click multiple messages. You can see I have a number selected. Or let me just click on this first message again. If I hold the shift key down after clicking the first message, I can click somewhere down here and get a whole range selected. And that's a technique that works in many different places. So I'll simply take this message and I will drag it and manually drag it to important stuff. And you can see there's a little mouse pointer. By the way, if I hold down the control key as I'm dragging or the command key on the Mac, I can copy it. You notice as long as I hold the key down, there's a little plus sign in there. I'm going to move it. So when I let go, you notice that message is gone here. When I go to the important stuff folder, there it is. If I decide that, I want it back, I can take it and drag it back again. It's gone. When I go to the inbox, there it is. Another way, or maybe a faster way that you can do this is with what is called a quick step. Quick steps are only in the Windows version. And that means that you can select one or more messages and with one click, you can move them into the folder that you want. Outlook does a fairly good job of creating them for you. It kind of guesses them, but not always. You can see here that I've got this quick step called important stuff. And that's just because it's my only subfolder. So Outlook just has it. it created it earlier. What if you want to create your own? What you do is on the ribbon bar where you have that quick steps area, click this little down arrow. It's the little one there with the hat on top. And from the drop down, choose new quick step and then choose move to folder. This is something you have to do only once. And you could give it a name. I'll call this. Maybe move to important folder. Go over here and choose the folder that I want to move it to. There it is. Choose that I want to move it. And I can have it marked as red or not when I have it moved. I generally don't like doing that, so I'm going to deselect it. Click finish. And now you see I have that quick step. So I can select any message here. Click that. Boom, you see it's gone. When I go to important stuff, there it is again. And I can select any message. Doesn't matter who it's from. Doesn't matter what the subject line is. I can select any message and then use this quick step. As I said, that's for Windows only. What works in Windows and also the Mac is this move button. So maybe I'll click on this one here. When I click move, Outlook does an admirable job of guessing, but again, maybe not. And I can choose other folder, pick out the folder I want. Now this little arrow might be twirled up, so you might have to twirl it open. Choose the folder, click OK, and the thing is moved. And now you see these two messages are together. And those are both good techniques, but wouldn't it really be nice if Outlook could do this for us automatically as messages arrive? One way that I can create a rule that Outlook will use to automatically move messages is based on a message I already moved. Let's take this one here. I have it selected. It's for my friend Amy. And I have this selected. And what I'll do is I'll go over here to Rules, click it. And then the first item here, I'll choose Always Move Messages from Amy Pond. I'll click that and I'll say, oh, all right, where do I want to move them? I want to move those messages into important stuff and click OK. Now, it doesn't have any immediate effect here, of course, because the message is already there. When I go back to the inbox, I see, of course, the message isn't there. But what happens when I get a new message from Amy? Well, let's take a look. Amy just sent me another email message. 
And depending on whether you're using Exchange or Pop or IMAP, you may or may not have to click Send and Receive. And it happened very quickly. You don't see anything from here, but look at that. That important stuff folder has that little number one. That means there's one unread message. Hmm, I wonder what it can be. Let's click it. And here is a brand new message from Amy. If you want a little bit more fine-tuned control over this process, you can use what's called the Rules Wizard. And the Rules Wizard also is Windows only. Let's go back to the inbox here. And you get to that also, still on the Home tab here on the ribbon, go to Rules, and instead of Always Move Messages, I'm going to choose Create Rule. Now you can see the Create Rules dialog box has a couple more options than what we had a moment ago. Not only can it grab messages based on who sent it, but also what the subject line contains and who it's being sent to. Maybe me only, me and other people. And we have something similar to this on the Mac that you'll see in a little bit. But the Rules Wizard has much more fine-tuned controls than this. So let's go over here and click Advanced Options. Now, by the way, there's another way to get there. Let me just cancel out of here, and I'll cancel out of here. You can also, from the same Rules button, go down here and choose Manage Rules and Alerts. Notice here's the rule that we created a moment ago. And for the Rules Wizard, I'm going to click New Rule. And here we have some kind of blank pre-made rules for us. But really, to get into the wizard, you choose down here where it says Start from a Blank Rule. This is what I usually choose. All of these pre-made ones tend to be not exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click over here where it says Apply Rule on Messages I Receive. Click Next. And this brings us into the Rules Wizard. You can see that up here. You see over here, the first choice is from people or group. I'm going to choose over here where it says with specific words in the subject. So I'm going to click in that box. And then down over here where it says specific words in the subject, I'll click. And then I can type in the actual word. So we'll just make it simple. I'll say newsletter and click add. Now I could specify additional words. Then Outlook will have to find all of those in order to flag the message. And when I'm done, I'll click OK. And you see the word newsletter is down here. Now down on bottom, I'll click Next. Say, OK, now that I've flagged the message, what am I going to do with it? So again, you have all of these choices. I'm going to choose the top one here, move it to the specified folder. So I'll click a check in there. Then down over here where it says specified, you see there's the link. Just like before, I'll click it. And I'll say, oh yeah, I want to move that to important stuff. Click OK. And there it is. Now I click Next to go to the next step, and now I can specify exceptions. So maybe I want to move them except if this happens, except if that happens. I'm going to leave all of this blank, and I'll click Next. And now I can give a name to the rule, and this name is really just for your benefit, whatever is meaningful. It's suggesting newsletter. That's fine in this case. And now I have two other options. If I choose this, Run the Rule Now on Messages, if I have a whole bunch of messages already, that have the word newsletter in the subject line, Outlook will go and grab them now. If I don't, then Outlook will leave them alone, and this rule will apply only to new messages that come in. And this option to turn on this rule, that's simply, do I want to have this enabled or disabled? I'm going to leave all this where it is and click Finish. And now you see this newsletter rule is here. By the way, see this little checkbox? That's just another way of enabling or disabling. And also, let's say I have a whole bunch of these newsletters in here already, and I didn't check that first checkbox, I could go select this here and run the rules now. There's no need for me to do this. I'm just going to click Apply, click OK. And what happens when we have a new newsletter coming in? So my friend Rory just sent me another newsletter. And messages are coming in. Look at that. There's another number one there. Let's see what that might be. And there is this message with the word newsletter in the subject line. So it automatically got pulled into important stuff. Now, the process of creating rules on the Mac is a little bit less involved, but it'll give you 90% of what you need, I'm sure. Let's take a look. On either the Home tab or the Organize tab on the ribbon, you have this button here for rules. And when you click that, choose Edit Rules. That brings up this Rules dialog box. And you see over here on the left, you can choose what type of email service you're using. I happen to be using Pop, so I'll choose Pop. And then down here on the bottom, you want to click this little plus sign. And kind of like the first dialog box we saw in the Windows version, you can put in a meaningful name. 
and then choose your options here. So for example, I chose when a new message arrives and I chose from and it contains the name or email address of the person. Here's one thing that the Mac does that Windows does not is that you can decide, well, do I want this if all conditions are met like in Windows or maybe just if any conditions are met or maybe unless conditions are met. So that's something Windows does not have. And then down over here, I can change the status or I can click this and decide, okay, I want to move into important stuff, make sure it's enabled and click OK. And then it works just like it does in Windows. OK, this is all great, but let's say maybe for some messages or some senders, you don't really want to deal with subfolders. You just want to color code the messages. And by the way, this is not mutually exclusive. You can color code or give custom formatting to messages and also have them moving into subfolders. But let's go back here to the inbox. And for the purpose of this training only, I'm going to go and disable those rules. So I'm going to go back to rules, manage rules and alerts. And I'm just going to disable those here. You don't have to do this. I'll apply and click OK. Creating custom formatting used to be simple in Outlook, but starting with the 2010 version, it's not. Now, if you're using the 2007 or maybe 2003 version, you could apply custom formatting with a little pane up here on top of all the messages. I'm using 2013 and chances are you're using 2010 or 2013 anyway. So here's what you do. We go up to the view tab. Oh, and by the way, did I mention this does not work on the Mac at all? This is only for Windows. So I go to the View tab, and over here, I'll choose View Settings. This brings up the Advanced View dialog box. And down over here, third from the bottom, I'm going to click Conditional Formatting. And in this Conditional Formatting dialog box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click at the top. I'll click Add. That adds a new condition. It's untitled. I'm going to give it a name that I want. And again, let's say I'm going to flag messages coming from Amy. So I'll just call this Amy and I'll set the condition. Click condition and kind of like before, I can search for various words or who it's from, who it's sent to, where I may be the only person, maybe I'm carbon copied. More choices. I have a whole bunch of other choices here. I could go into the advanced tab and even set kind of like database type of filters. But I'm going to keep it simple. I'll stay on the messages tab. And I want to grab, again, messages that come from Amy Pond and click OK. And you see, it doesn't change the name of the role. That's just a friendly name for me. And rather than default format, the whole point is, let me choose a font for just these messages. And I think I'm going to set this to Franklin Gothic. That's a nice bold font. If you don't have Franklin Gothic, you can choose any old font you want. I'll choose this. But I also want to make this red. So it'll be bold and red and it'll stand out. Maybe I'll even make it a little bigger. Click OK. So there's a sample of what it's going to look like. Click OK. Click OK again. Well, what happens when another message comes in from Amy? So once again, let's go and check incoming messages. And there it is. Here's this message formatted bold and red. And also in the 2013 version, because it's new, you have this little bar over here that kind of highlights. So you can see that Outlook has great features for sorting and organizing mail. The biggest problem is just knowing where to find some of these features. And everything I showed you in this tutorial, you could also use for messages that you send out. So let's say you want to keep a subfolder of all messages that have maybe sales proposals or all messages that you send to a particular client all grouped into one subfolder for easy reference. You can do it the same exact way. And you could also nest subfolders. What I've done on my own computer for real in Outlook is in my inbox, I created a folder called clients and inside the clients folder, I have each individual client listed and a rule to bring in messages from each one. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful to get your Outlook organized. Once again, my name is Bob Flisser for Tuts Plus and I'll catch you later.